Uh, right, hi, I am Mark from Eleven Media. I'm Lane, also from Eleven Media. Right, we are here today bringing you another technical side of writing podcast, and this time we are focusing on world building. Oh, uh, <laughs> by all means, you first. Right, uh, this is that part of writing where you take your setting and you bring it to life, basically. It is one of my favourite parts of writing as a whole. You know, you have to pick a place, a time... And then have those things, you know, take your characters who may be in the fledgling stages and give them, you know, so, um, I guess a depth, you know, a mould to follow. Absolutely. And I guess from there, once... You, I'm sorry, I lost my thought. But once you go from there... I'm sorry. <laughs> Save you. Okay, uh, right. Lane has temporarily lost track of his thoughts. That's fine. So, um... The very first thing I would say to do with your world building is choose your genre. That is the most important, because obviously different genres have different elements which make sense in them. Like, you know, fantasy, you can have hobbits running around, whereas if you're writing, you know, gritty thriller, you could still have hobbits running around. It could be a gritty, gritty fil- fil- uh, thriller fantasy in the Shire, but... Definitely, but definitely. it's not something you're looking for generally. That's no. quite a niche shamer. <laughs> so, um... Let's go with horror for our example. Let's go with horror for our example. Um... So, where would we begin with horror? Right, well, look at all the different movies and books we've read about horror. I mean, you could have your supernatural stuff, like ghosts, you know, um, possession? Haunting. Yeah, stuff I was going like to go that. for haunting. But yeah, haunting, ghosts, possession. Uh, you could go a bit more Darren Shan, get some gore involved, have some demons. Cause... Slasher fic, if you want. Ooh, slasher. Slashers are good. Yeah, um, so yeah, you could go full on Jack the Ripper if you wanted. Oh, uh, yeah. That yeah. is definitely the way to go if you're writing horror, I think. Definitely. I, mean, so... I think I've said to you before, I'm a bit of a nerd and I do try to figure out the average and then just throw mm. twists on tropes that are already very popular. Mm. Twist, twists are something we like here at Eleven Media. Yeah. We have never found a trope that we have yet to twist. That we have yet to twist? Or that we have already twisted. That we have something twisted? like that. Something That's like something that. like that. We're good at English. We're good at English. <laughs> Honestly, you can trust us on this. We're better at written English than we are at spoken English. I but can it's definitely fine. agree with that. <laughs> Anyway. Uh, right, so we have chosen, in this instance, our horror genre. Um, however, genres are horribly complex things, so I think we should probably narrow that one down, because there's a lot of scope just in horror, isn't there? Setting. Setting. Like the actual setting, like, what yeah. building is it in? I mean, very <laughs> common basements, and, you know, right. stuff like that. It's uh, yeah. dark, dingy. So, yeah, so um, pick a favourite setting of yours in a horror movie. So ours is probably, yet. Yeah, Dingy basements, um, ooh, hospitals, yeah, hospitals, mental. graveyards, mental hospitals especially. They lead to some disturbing horror, I'd say, but yeah. not necessarily bad because or of the it. the back alley behind the theatre. Ask Batman, that was very disturbing. Oh God, you just reminded me of a joke. <laughs> Honestly, what rolls down an, what, um, what rolls down an alley full of holes? I don't know. Batman's parents. <laughs> that's <laughs> no, excellent. that's terrible. Right, sorry, we got sidetracked there. Um, but yeah, so um, pick your favourite setting in a horror movie. Just, you know, go through your movie list, pick one, then pick the reasons you love it. So, for example, we like our mental hospitals. So a g- brilliant horror movies or stories to write in there would be your ghost stories, your possession, your psychological thrillers are really good in there. Absolutely. Because then you don't necessarily need any supernatural elements to your horror if that's something you want to avoid. You can just have the human condition. Being... Yeah, some fucked up guy with a really big knife hidden under his mattress. Mm-hmm. Happens a surprising amount. Doesn't. Anyway. Yeah, an- <laughs> anyway, right, we'll, we'll leave that there. <laughs> Um, so, right, once you have picked your setting, um, yeah, I think we'll move forward with that mental hospital idea. Um, I'd start off looking for ways you can bring your characters. Like, you might already have an idea for a main character, you know, like some, I don't know, you know, a gentle-hearted, compassionate nurse, or, you know, maybe a... Paranoid schizophrenic. A paranoid schizophrenic. With a big knife. With a big knife, because Lane's not going to let go of that. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so pick ways that you could bring your potential characters that you already have brewing into the story. So mental hospital, yeah, orderlies, patients, doctors, nurses. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so there's plenty of ways to bring them into this one. Um, I guess in different horror stories it would depend, but you know. On the setting, yes. On the setting, but there's always bring ways to bring them in so like if it's a school setting you've got teachers and students that's easy if you've got uh, a graveyard setting okay that might be a bit harder but still it's doable i mean caretakers 
Like Yeah, yeah, caretakers mm. wielding a broom against the dead or something. Wielding a broom against the dead. I Actually, think we... that sounds more action. Than yeah, that, that's, and we've, we've strayed into zombie territory. If you want to do action horror, for me, please, do a story with a like cleaner wielding a broom. I'd like that. Yeah, I guess if it was like, vampires, you know, you got a big wooden stick. That... Anyway, Hi-ya! we're getting sidetracked. Again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Right, so we have chosen our setting. We have the mental hospital. Um, I think, so, you know... Um, a good thing for Thriller is usually a single point of view, isn't it? I'd say so, yeah, anything mm. along that. Um, so our single point of view, nurse maybe? Or are you going for one of the patients, aren't you? I want to be a patient. You want a patient. Sorry, do. I said I want to be a patient, but what I meant was <laughs> I want it to be a patient. I'm not a patient. Not anymore. No, not anymore. 2009, for least. Definitely joking. See, that's freaky because that's before I met you, so it could be true. <laughs> right. Uh, once you have chosen your setting, chosen, you know, a way to bring your characters into the setting, next I would start adding some depth to it. What I mean by this is you can have, you know, you can have a very traditional setting. So you can have a mental hospital, but it's going to be a bit like a picture, you know. You can see it, it looks like it should, but it's not going to be like a proper 3D image, I guess. Yeah, the cogs aren't really moving yet. There's mm. nothing going to or from anything. You need to set the scene. You need to actually populate the place. Mm. But with, as you said, history. With history. History is good. So, for example, in our mental hospital, if we were going the psychological route, then we could have, you know, maybe an unfortunate, if somewhat true, history of, you know, abuse among patients. It's, you know, it's quite it's quite dark and it's not necessarily an ast- uh, something I personally write, but it could add a lot of depth to your hospital and explain a lot of what's happening in your story. Absolutely. Um, or if we were going the more supernatural route, like going for ghosts and possession and stuff, then we'd probably need a basement. Because let's face it, everything supernatural happens in the basement. Yeah, I tell you what, if the story we're apparently now writing doesn't have a basement scene where somebody dies, I'm you, very disappointed. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're terrible writers if that's... Okay, so um, a basement... But um, to give your setting some history again... Um, Probably some kind of unfortunate, gruesome, possibly unsolved murders. Ooh, unsolved murders, yeah. Ooh, that sounds bad. Because a lot of ghost ghost myths usually have unfinished business, yeah. don't they? So, yeah, so look for something like that. So, um, so a place where uh, somebody's died or, you know, maybe where somebody was murdered. In fact, yeah. we're doing horror. It's probably going to be a murder. Almost certainly. Almost certainly. That's the unfortunate truth. That a horrible mutilation. Of Sorry. <laughs> Right, okay, we need to give like these ratings of PG or something. No, no, God, not PG. 15 rating at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this right. is great. Just watch this with your parents. Listen to this with your parents. Right, Keep so... Keep the porn on in the background, that's fine. I'm so, right... At least you haven't started on the zip jokes yet. Right, <laughs> okay, so once you've decided on some history for your setting, um, then I guess a good place to go forwards from there would be how it's affected the future or wherever your setting is now. So, you know, this unfortunate murder, maybe there's a fresh layer of concrete in the basement. Ooh, maybe. Ooh, maybe. Um, you know, or scratches on the walls, maybe. Um, you know, maybe all the doctors and the nurses, you know, they can't quite look each other in the eye when talking about a certain room. You know, maybe something horrible happened there. Maybe the doctors and the nurses aren't actually there at all. Maybe none of the other patients are. Who knows? That is also a true thing. Sorry. Um, actually, I was just, well, okay. You, you, <laughs> thinking possible things you could do at that point. You know, like, it's not a bad idea, actually. In fact, right, let's go with this tangent because it's not a bad one. Um, if you were to do something like that, so something like, you know, this is like very psychological horror that exists in somebody's mind, then a good thing to add to your setting would be clues that it is in somebody's mind. Because if readers get to the end of the book and they're like, oh, this is all in their head, so it's fine. They'll be, they'll be disappointed, yeah. won't they? Like, but, break the fourth wall somewhere. Like, yeah. make sure there are things that are mm. there that wouldn't be in that scene or that setting, definitely. Like, yeah. seeping through from the subconscious. Mm, so, oh, like, maybe all the orderlies all have the same, like, face. Maybe they're the same person. Yeah, absolutely. You know, all like, you know, so, um, oh, what else could we do? This is quite a fun example, actually. Um, you could have, you know, like, maybe you could have people who are from different countries come in, but they're still speaking English. Yeah. You know, just little, just little details like that. If you leave clues, then people get to the end of the book, realize, oh my god, it was actually inside their head, and they'll be like, oh, "We're really clever for solving this." Yeah, 
And I'm not going to lie, I love feeling clever when reading books, so I'm like, that would make yeah, me very I happy. I just like feeling clever, so <laughs> turn it into a movie and I'm still quite happy. <laughs> right, so, yes, we've lost our point slightly, but... Did we? We kind of went off on a different one, but it's fine. Okay. Going back to our original point, once you've decided on the history and the depth of your setting, look for ways you can show people it's, hap it's happened without actually just saying, oh no, there was a gruesome murder. So, you know, look, you know, uh, look for, so yeah, the doctors that can't quite look each other in the eye, or, you know, maybe a few scratch marks that haven't quite been covered up, you know, fresh layers of, con look for ways you can tell people the history of this setting without actually just outright telling them, if yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, show, show, not tell, that's it, I'll say. Yeah. I always come across that when I'm reading up on writing. For example, have the patient every day talk to the same guy for 10 years and never show the audience a different person mm. apart from the orderlies who all look the same. Then the people will be like, hmm, that's odd, there's only one other person. Mm. There we go. Uh, right, so we've taken our setting, we've given it some depth, we've worked out how that you know that history and depth would affect the setting. Um, where would we go from here? Um, Probably conflict. Oh yeah, conflict and obstacles. So yeah. this would depend largely on the character you are making use of. But for example, if we take Lane's patient, then an obvious obstacle would be well their own uh, psychological illnesses because it would be hard. For example, if they see somebody running around the hospital killing people, if we went the slash figure, it'd be really hard for them to make people believe them. Yeah. Especially if one of the problems they've been having is like hallucinations or delusions. That would oh that would be really good actually yeah I like that okay um but another pro another obstacle would be the doctors um you know maybe um we're going a little less psychological and maybe the doctors are the villains of this piece but hey they're the doctors you know who's going to believe the patients over the doctors yeah maybe they're just like euthanizing patients with a Ooh. bloody hacksaw right. We yeah okay um we could go patients with no family get cremated automatically I think oh my god that is horrible sorry yeah, no, yeah I did but... my research for some horror writing about morgues a little while ago okay fair enough no sweet home oh of course yeah uh but yeah no it's a good point so look for conflicts and obstacles that would fit your setting so yeah in our case it would be doctors it would be the patient's own illnesses it would be what else could we include um. Maybe, I don't know, maybe some very rich person who's just paying people off while they basically fuck with people for their own fun. Oh, this is why I don't like writing horror. <laughs> I yeah, don't have I know. the stomach for it. <laughs> but once again, that is an obstacle. And, and actually, a really good villain, a pe villain people will love to hate. So that's why my best writing is all about the bad people in the world. Yeah. Um, as and then you could also look for literal obstacles, you know, obstacles that the setting itself presents. So we've got a hosp hospital, so obviously lots of locked doors, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, lots of security cameras, so things like that. Um, and these just create, you know, when you have characters overcome obstacles that are part of your setting, it's just like, yay, they've, you know, this is good, this is a step forward. Uh, when they come into conflict with others, it's like, well, again, it makes for brilliant storytelling. Yeah. Oh, dear me. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm struggling with this setting. I'm not going to... Okay. Well, then the next thing, in the example mm. of a psychological flaw, the next thing I would prefer would be still going with conflict here. Mm. Uh, if it was psychological, uh, examples of the person having problems, like showing, you know, the actual mm. disorder itself. I don't like using the word disorder, but... Uh, but, for example, have them looking around corners and seeing people that aren't there and things like that. Make mm. it clear that there is definitely something wrong. Mm. This person is not just, like, wrongfully arrested. Well, yeah. So, you know, I mean, obviously, it's not going to be to everybody's taste. For example, I'm str I'm struggling with the ideas behind this, but... Sorry. No, 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 it's okay. It's good. It's a, it's a test of ability. But if you are going to go in on the psychological route, then you've got to be... In fact, yeah, that's a good point, actually. You've got to be willing to go in all the way, as it were. Yeah, do your research. I mean, mm. I've done a lot of research with psychological work myself and mm. seen into the effects of people who've suffered for years mm. and years with the same condition. 
So yeah, it can make for an exceptional story, but you've got to be willing to delve in. There's mm. no point in writing a book that's going to be that intense, that intrusive, unless you're going to do it properly. I'm afraid. Mm. So yeah, if if you're like me and you know you're a bit squeamish around this stuff, then maybe look into a different genre or a different. Subject.